Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. Once again, we're showing the PS4 a bit of love for a change as it has been quite a while. And this is going to be a pretty substantial update for PS4 and PS5. Lots of topics to dive into here in this video. In fact, one of the biggest ones I've done in a while because there's just so much happening on PS5 and we've also compiled quite a few things for PS4 as well here. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. So we just got a new case stuff release with full support for 6.xx firmware released by Echo Stretch with a lot of help coming from Zeko's mysterious keys friend along with Zeko himself and the usual suspects of course Buzzer, Best Pig, Idle Sauce and Al Azev. And this is a proper release so it's one elf file. There's now a proper github repo that you can just download the file from and it has full support from 3.0 all the way up to 6.50 6.50 was already supported in a previous build but now 6.0 and 6.02 are also included so all firmwares from 3.0 up to 6.50 are supported with this one version of K stuff. So you can just send this using your normal payload injector when you have the elf loader running. So if you want to know how to load these payloads on firmwares higher than 5.50 that don't have a WebKit exploit, I have done a full guide that shows you how to load it using the Blu-ray drive exploit and the Lua based exploit too. So you can go ahead and get up and running with your PS4 fake packages on firmwares 6.0 and 6.02 and any higher firmwares that get released. It looks like 7.xx firmwares are going to be coming pretty soon too. We also have an update to the UMTX WebKit exploit from IdleSauce known as UMTX2. Now it is using the same WebKit exploit so it will still only work up to 5.50. There's no change there. It's still using PS3150B. So the same WebKit exploit. However, the implementation of triggering the UMTX kernel exploit is different. It's now using essentially the same code as the Lua exploit. So that is kind of the best version of the exploit anyway, is the Lua version, because it runs super, super fast. Normally it only takes a few seconds to execute. And then on top of that, it's also extremely stable. Now you can't necessarily get the same level of stability and speed through the WebKit as you can with the Lua exploit. But using that same method as the Lua exploit should be quite a bit better than the existing implementation we've been using on the WebKit up until now. So I've thrown up a timer here showing the original version of the exploit. So this is the normal one that we're all used to. And you can see that running there and how long that takes. So that's a typical example of how long it normally takes with the older version to actually get things loaded up. And of course, that's if it does not crash, because quite often it will end up crashing and you have to relaunch and try again. So if you just want to test the new version, then if you're on the older UMTX exploit from IdleSauce, you can just press the uh, left trigger and that will bring up a URL redirector and then you can just enter umtx2.pages.dev and then it will take you over to the new version. Wait for it to cache the payloads. Once that's complete, it'll say caching finished and then you can just refresh the page and it should say that the cache is up to date, at which point you can then try and run the jailbreak and you'll see the difference here. So it does have to do these kind of racing attempts that's going to take a while. So it's still not super, super fast. It's not, again, as fast as the Lua exploit, but it should be more stable than the previous implementation. And I also noticed that once it eventually loads and gets to the point where it's running the elf loader, it seems to launch that much faster than the older version of the exploit takes to launch the elf loader and bring up the payloads. Um, it does need to be tested on other firmwares, so definitely try it on different firmwares because there might be certain firmwares where it's less stable than others. We don't know at this point, so give it a try on your firmware and see if you find it to be better than the previous implementation. So that's the new UMTX exploit. If you're happy with it and you want to use this one by default, there is already a package file created that you can go and download from the GitHub repo. So if you head over to the UMTX GitHub repo from IdleSauce, you can just go ahead and download the package here, download that package file, copy it to the root of a USB drive. And then when you have the jailbreak loaded or ETA hen loaded, you can just head into the debug settings, go over to the package installer and install that package. And then it will be available in the media section on the homepage and you can just launch it from there and you'll always have access to that new version. So yeah, there you go, a new implementation there, UMTX2 for the WebKit, which so far on my 4.03 system at least, I'm definitely noticing this to be more stable than the previous implementation, which is a great improvement. So sticking with the PS5 for a minute, we also need to talk about ETA Hen, because Lightning Mods is putting in a hell of a lot of effort here to make this the biggest ETA Hen update we'll probably ever see. There's so many new features being added here. It's not released yet. It's still in a pre-release state for the 2.0B. There are test versions that support 5.x firmwares. Also, Lightning Mods has just shown off a video of him having ETA Hen running on 6.50. So he's also got 6.50 support added here. 
Uh, the 6.50 support also includes things like uh, items flow as well. So that's also been updated to support all the new firmwares. You can see him uh, successfully launching a game backup here on 6.50 through items flow. So he's got all of that up and running as well. And on top of the 5.x and 6.x support that's coming and potentially 7.x once we get K stuff for that too, he is also adding a lot of additional features to ETA Hen. So one of the features I've seen, which is pretty impressive, is the new ETA Hen DPI v2, a continuation of the direct package installer with an added web UI so that you can install package files from any device with a browser. No external program needed. Coming soon in ETA Hen 2.0b's official release. So he's got a few screenshots here that you can check out. Direct package installer. So it runs the web server on your PS5's IP on port uh, 12800. And then you essentially just access that on the web browser of whatever device has the package file that you want to send to the console and you can just open up that web page in the browser and then choose the package file and then it can just send it to the ps5 and the ps5 will automatically install it with the direct package installer that's going to make it much easier much more convenient to install package files remotely with this new eta hen release when it comes out so in addition to that a few more features that's been added so lightning mods has also said two new features are coming in items flow for PS5 for 1.09. One of them you might remember from PS4. That's right, on console retail game updates are back. So being able to install game updates directly from Sony's CDN, their content delivery network. So you can basically just install uh, the official game updates, but you can choose which one you want to install so that you can pick an older version of the update that is compatible with your firmware version. So it's pretty handy that that feature is now coming to the PS5 version because it's been available in the PS4 version for some time. And if you thought Lightning Mods was going to stop there, well then you would be wrong. Obviously there's the new cheat feature that he has added, which has been added in the pre-release for some time, but he's also adding the ability to automatically download the latest cheats from within the menu, very similar to how it works obviously in Gold 10 with the PS4. Uh, with that new feature that was added in I think 18.2 or thereabouts so yeah basically the same kind of idea here where it will automatically download the latest cheats online and install them for you so that whenever you launch the game you'll have the latest cheats available so that is also coming to this new version of ETA Hen so all of those new features as well as a couple of other smaller features that are also being included here on top of the fact that we'll probably have 5.x 6.x and maybe even 7.x firmware by the time this comes out so just incredible awesome work there from lightning mods if you want to support his work i'll leave his ko-fi page down in the description uh, if you want to leave him a donation i think he definitely deserves it for all this incredible work he's been doing lately so moving on from that if you do want to test eta hen zeko has actually included it in one of his hosts so so zekoxao.github.io slash lua sauce. So you can use that version of the exploit if you want to get access to not only the new UMTX2 WebKit version, but also when you load ETA Hen, although it may say 1.9b potentially, it will actually load the new ETA Hen 2.0 pre-release. So let's take a break from all that PS5 news for a minute and cover some PS4 development. So of course we got the release of Gold Hen version 2.4b18.3, uh, just a couple of days ago. So this version of Gold Hen adds support for 9.03 firmwares. So if you were waiting on 9.03, you'll finally have access to Gold Hen. And that brings all of the firmwares that could only be jailbroken using the PPPone exploit up to the same level of support. They all have Gold Hen support now, uh, which is awesome. And on top of that, there's a new feature added, which is to auto apply the game cheats on game start. So you can enable this option here. And as soon as you launch the game, any cheats that you already had enabled previously when you're on that game will automatically enable as soon as you launch it so that you will not have to re-enable the same cheats every single time you relaunch the game, which is a very handy feature that's been added there. And there's also been some improvements made to the kernel log server as well in that new version. I did a breakdown of how to install it and get it all set up in a previous video, so I'll leave that linked down in the description. Now, there's also an exciting new plugin from XFang Fang that has been released here as well for Gold Hen. So this particular plugin is called Remote Pad. If we go over to the wiki here, it says that this Gold Hen plugin allows up to four players to connect to the PS4 through network or USB work in progress and control it. This plugin was primarily developed to enable the use of third-party controllers or smartphones for playing local multiplayer games as there's no need to spend extra money on additional DS4 controllers. So rather than trying to explain this straight away, let's just go ahead and set this up because I think it's more obvious once you actually see it in action. So to install this plugin, you just want to download the file from the repo and then copy it to the data gold hen plugins directory using FTP. 
and then also download the plugins.ini file from the plugin repository and edit it to add in the file path to that plugin in the default section. And then just copy that plugins file to the same location as the plugins folder on the hard drive. And then from there, we just need to enable the plugins loader in the gold hen settings and launch a game that supports more than one player. So we're going to use Minecraft. So we're going to go ahead and open up Minecraft. And once the game loads up, you'll notice a notification that will pop up. So it'll give you your PS4's IP address and the port number. And once we get into a game here, you can see it says press X for another person to join. So that's because I believe the game has detected that there's that there's other controllers connected when there's not. And that's what that plugin does. It occupies the empty controller slots so that the game thinks that there's other controllers connected. You can essentially just open up a web browser and go to that IP address and port number and it will take us to this kind of virtual controller here. If I press the X button, it will allow me to join the game as if I have another controller connected directly to the console and I can use this to basically be player two in the game. Now this may seem pretty janky to you and obviously it's not really designed to be used this way because what you can do is just plug in like a USB controller or something or a Bluetooth, connect a Bluetooth controller like an Xbox controller or something to your computer and it should get detected. You can see it detects the gamepad when I plug in my PS4 controller into the computer here and I'm able to use that controller and it will pass through those inputs over the network to uh, the console so that I can control player two in the game. So that is the idea behind this. So it's a pretty cool way of allowing third-party controllers and you know smartphone controllers and that kind of thing to work on your PS4 by transmitting the inputs over the network. And there is going to be supposedly a USB version coming uh, at some point in the future that is work in progress. Uh, which would make it even better because if that's like USB where you can just plug in like a third party controller directly into the console and use it, uh, that would obviously not have the latency problem that the networking uh, option has. Definitely one of the most interesting Gold Hen plugins that I've come across lately and it's from Xfang Fang, which is the same guy behind the C++ version of the PP Pwn exploit that we're all using in our Luckfox Picos and Raspberry Pis to jailbreak our PS4s on firmwares above 9.0, which is pretty awesome. Speaking of those devices, there's also a new project to allow us to run the PPPone jailbreak on the PS4 on a different set of devices. So this is Pone V Duo, which is designed for the Milk V Duo, Milk V Duo 256M, and the Milk V Duo S. Uh, there's also another chip here as well, but the ones that are tested and working at the moment are the Milk V Duos. So these devices are pretty damn cheap. You can get them as low as $5. Uh, which is even cheaper than Luckfox Picos, but the current implementation of the project does require a micro SD card at the moment, but that's most likely only temporary because it looks like these do have flash storage, so theoretically you could have the exploit loaded on the flash instead of requiring an SD card, but at the moment the current implementation uses an SD card. So there is the Milk V Duo, so this particular chip does not include a uh, Ethernet port, so this would be a good one to have integrated inside the PS4 itself, like the uh, Luckfox Mini B, and I've done a whole project on that showing how to integrate it as a mod chip with it being installed internally in your console. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But also there are other products like the Duo S which does have an Ethernet port and that can be connected up externally via an Ethernet cable. It is a bit more expensive but again if you want to have it external that is another option and it does actually work with the uh, Duo S although it does say it is currently untested. So it's another device that you can use over a Luckfox Pico, especially if you live somewhere where Luckfox Picos are not available. In that case, perhaps Milk V Duo, you might be able to get your hands on one of these instead, uh, which is a good alternative that also works with this new project. Okay, and lastly for the PS4, we have the PS4 Avatar Changer. So I did cover this for PS5 as there was a PS5 version that came out recently. The PS4 version is quite a few weeks old at this point. It's been out for quite some time. But uh, yeah, generally you can use this to just set your avatar pictures on your profiles and you can also add your own avatars to the data folder, which will then allow you to pick those and apply them to different profiles. You can also change your username for your profile too, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but when your account is activated, it can actually be quite awkward to try and change your profile username. So being able to just do it from a homebrew app is nice and convenient. So that is also another option that is built in there. So yeah, thought I would mention it. I know it's a few weeks old, but it's another homebrew app that is now available for the PS4 too. And finally on the PS5, we also got the release of a build of FPKGI that now has PS5 support. So again, this is the port of the PS3 PKGI application, a very popular 
a homebrew application for downloading and installing package files. So, you know, we've had access to this for about a month or so at this point on the PS4, but this is the first build that now supports the PlayStation 5. There are still a few things that are not working correctly at the moment, but you can get it up and running. So I think that should be more than enough here for this update, but obviously there's lots of new stuff coming out all the time, so I'll probably have another update fairly soon. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys as always in the next video.